Yo, hello and welcome. So we're gonna talk about Lost Ark and everything you wanna know about Lost Ark and here is everything I know after playing this game since launch in the EU version for thousands of hours. I have I, th I have 1.6k hours on this game so far, right? So the, in this video, I'm gonna talk about a lot of things. So this is the overview of everything I'm gonna talk. So I'm gonna talk about the story line and then the end game content which is the raids and the dungeons the collectible version bvb all the classes in the game the bay to win and the bay features in the game is the game bay to win or anything about that the way that you can have ults or different characters and lastly how grindy is the game all right so that's the idea of everything we're going to talk about in this video all right so let's get into the first thing. So the first thing is the story. So how the story works in this game, right? You start playing the game, you start in the world of Arcasia and you start level one and they give you this little tutorial of how you play the game, how skills go for go. And then you start level 10, I think. And in the first area on the map, so if you look at the overworld of the map, you start here, right? And you have all the sort to explore, right? So you start level one and you do the story. The story is almost solo, except that every time, every now and then when you reach an area, you get to do a dungeon. So either you can do this dungeon with you, you and only your party. So like if you start the game with a friend or you can do it in the fine party. So that's up to you. There's two difficulties, normal or hard. So that's like a really nice way of like doing cool dungeons with your friend. It's really nice of them to allow you to do this early on. I honestly enjoyed doing the doing all of these dungeons with my friend. I started this game all, all with my friend, right? And then you have you progress through the map. So the idea here is that the way that stories work is everybody has different ways of playing a game, right? Some people enjoy the story, listen to it and enjoy it, some don't. So if you're enjoying the story, you really won't feel annoyed doing it. But if you kinda don't and you wanna skip through it, you have that you can kind of skip through the story like trying to speed run it i think it will take you around eight hours to skip through all of this to reach level 50 and then unlock the first stage of dungeons right and after that when you unlock this you have the main area so the main story like the first part of the story you'll have to like go through all of this turtoic and then Annika and Arlentine and after that you technically finish the first board after that they will keep telling you to jump up another board and each, each board they will tell you to do it will take around two hours let's say to do it for your, so for your character so that's how the, car the idea of the story design you still unlock all, a good amount of dungeons and really cool in-game stuff if that's something you want uh, very early on so by leveling up after like let's say four hours of gameplay you unlock bvb so on around level 30 and then after eight hours of gameplay that's if you're a speedrun if you don't really speedrun you might take like 12 hours right so or even a little bit more right you start unlocking the dungeons and which we're gonna talk about so that's basically the idea of the story and how the storylines work in this game all right so now the second thing we're gonna talk about is your end game and in your end game looks kind of different in this game so the first thing i want to explain is that you have something called gear score in this game so in any ever mmo you have something called gear score right so the way that the gear score works is that you start level one or you have like almost one gear score and then the more equipment you have the stronger you get and then you level up these equipments by honing them so the honing in this game works like other, almost other games which is you have a certain chance of going so some items will have 100% and they go decreasingly the chances and then you click on it every time you click on an item you have an ch increased chance right and then the more you increase your gear power you get to unlock your dungeons so we're gonna talk about your standard dungeon in this game so there's two things that are standard right so the first thing, and I'll show you how everything, you start in something called Chaos Dungeons. So you go inside this Chaos Dungeons and you have the starting gear power for it, which is three, 250, right? And then you can increase. So that's the first thing you unlock, 250, which is your Chaos Dungeon. So the way that the Chaos Dungeons work is that you get to do 
two chaos dungeons every day on your character or you can do it in a different thing called response but we'll get to that later so you can do the chaos dungeon twice a day and then after that the reward decrease so, uh, the decrease so much it does, it's not really worth it so that's like you do it if you really have time okay and the way that they work is that you go inside and as you can see it's they spawn a lot of mobs on you and you have three gates and then you also have a lucky gate so either there's gonna be three gates or four gates right and you kill these but a lot of these mobs just jump on you and you have a big boss that you kind of easily kill so this is basically your standard way of farming in this game right so this is the first thing now the second thing second type of things you get to do is guardian raid so a guardian raid is that you fight these guardian raids so it's a one boss he is in this map it's kind of like monster hunter type thing so you have this one boss you want to kill there is mechanics to these bosses so this is the, the first time where you start to learn mechanics and patterns so bosses have mechanics that they have to do if you fail to do them you take damage or you get killed or stuff like that obviously you won't get introduced to stuff like that early on but later on you will and you also get to do two guardian raids a day in uh, of these and it's like you fight this big boss and you just try to kill it either you can go alone or with four people usually go with four people until you become strong enough that you can take it on your own and if you if you want you can still take it on your own just will be harder you uh, all right and that's how guardian raids look like all right after that so you start you did your ks and you did your guardian so your first guardian you need 300 and 302 right that's the first thing after doing both of these you will in, get into something else called a pistol dungeon now a pistol dungeon is the start of your actual fun content in this game so the way that the Abyssal Dungeons work is that you start in level 340 gear power and you basically go in the dungeon. You have to go as four people. You're, you want to kill bosses. It depends on ev everyone is different. So some of them have two bosses, some have three. And the bosses have mechanics that you have to do. Most of the, most of the early ons won't have really hard mechanics, but later on you will have harder and harder mechanics. Right? And I'm not obviously I'm showing you random pictures of different things, different abyssal dungeons. But like the the overall is that this is the start. It's actually really fun. Like you get to do dungeons and stuff like that. You all you can always go blindly, or some people tell you to watch videos. That's something up to you. If you want to go blind and try it and have fun, do that. It's not you don't have to actually go and watch a video if anybody told you that. That's so weird. Have fun and do it. So right. now you progressively increase your gear power and then the more you increase your gear power the more you get unlocked to new thing but all of these things right now your story comes back again so you unlocked all of these from the first part of the story you will tell you reach level 460 gear power and then you will tell you go and do another story part and then same thing repeats and repeats so you get more power and then you do another storyline the storyline will you will be introduced to a different area in the map all right so and then the abyssal dungeon will be a thing with you forever you're gonna keep getting newer and newer stuff right so you did so the abyssal dungeons you all you only get to do once per character every week right and then after that you ha you get introduced to something called abyssal raid so the abyssal raid is fighting this one boss which is called Argus you start at level at 1370 gear power and he has three phases and every phase is harder and needs more gear power right and this dude that this dude is an eight man raid he's not really focused on mechanics but he's more about like uh you have to fight it he deals good damage right and then after all of that you get to the final end game this is the biggest thing which is something called the legion raid so the legion raid is the biggest type of bosses in this game these are the these the legion raids are what invading this world in the storyline and you want to stop them legion raid are the most skillful version of the game and you have different difficulties when you start playing them. so it's an eight man raid with mechanics and they have not one mechanic they have multiple of mechanics and when you start reaching them you have a 14 15 gear power that's that that's in the end game and then you have different difficulties so normal for them is low difficulty hard is 1445 
it gets harder more mechanics and it, you have a less open uh, window of making mistakes as an eighth person it's really fun it's really good and you get you get to enjoy the game and see what is the game offers right and then they also introduce something called inferno so inferno is not a thing you have to do it's basically like a very very difficult raid so they take normal raid and add so many more difficulties to it and they give you prestigious rewards so like oh i killed this boss on this high difficult so it's like a prestigious thing right and that's basically all the in-game for you so this is everything that the game offers in dungeons and stuff like that all right so collectibles so every game offers something like collectibles so collectibles is the thing that you find throughout the game so the way that the collectibles work in this game is have different type of collectibles so you have something called island souls giant sword omnium stars master pieces mokoku seeds everything so each one of these all of them have different ways to approach there is something and there is a fun way of finding them in this game there is a codex which allows you to find anything so if i type a masterpiece i can just search from the codex and tell me what to do so each of these have different ways so that's a thing for people that like to collect in game it's really it's a huge collectible it takes you so much time honestly to do all of them you kind of have to do some of the collectibles to become stronger so because like these collectibles offer you skill points and uh, so you get a little bit stronger it's not a major thing it's not a must must but it's a very important thing to do if you want to get stronger in the game and the way that the collectibles are and also the collectibles line with something with the events so every day you have events timed events so you have like islands that appear every hour case dungeons a different thing all of, all of these are cool stuff so a lot of my friends have done them and they tell me they're very fun i didn't do a lot in the collectibles i did a good amount but not all of them it's basically the idea is that you go do simple either like side stories and they're cool they're drawn everything is fun about it it's up to you so like you know this is the collectible version of the game but the kind of the but there is a thing in this game that they kind of force you to do some of the collectibles because they do give you more power so that's the thing you have to keep in mind the next thing we're going to talk about is bvb so the bvb in this game you unlock it around level 30 so i'm the reason i'm saying around is that you unlock it usually by story so you are gonna usually be around level 30 or even lower than that that depends on how much you did side quest all right so the way that the bvb works in this game is that you have three three different things which is the normal stuff so you have team deathmatch you have a death match, which is the six people 1v1 team death match is like three versus three and then team elimination is that you three versus three people and then one goes in front of one right that's one thing and then you have something called the, the competitive is always the same i haven't played in so long so the game is keep decreasing i i think i was blat or something but they kept dropping you that's if you don't play right so that the way that the competitive works is always gonna be team death match and it's just 3v3 the way that the bvb works in this game is that you don't get to use your normal character you use this which is the book of coordination you get to speak what abilities you want all of us have the same amount of uh, skill points stats and we don't get to use our buffs from outside so we're all equalized in this version and you go and you play one 3v3 also your abilities kind of change inside so you have a version for bve and version for bvb all right so that's the thing and then there's like event with events which have something like co-op co battles that's like an event thing that doesn't you only get to do this in specific times you also can use a book for it and this is like a, a 6v6 it's like a, a type of, it's like the league games or stuff like that you know and there's also customs where you can make with your friend and there's another things where you get to do BVB, which is island. There's some islands that you have to do BVB in it. It's like a BVB event, which is like two parties fight with each other. And there's also guild related events, which have BVB and you also have to fight with each other. And some people can even make BVB build. I would say that the BVB in this game, I tried it. I honestly enjoyed it. I just don't have so much time to play it. But the BBB is fun. It, the community, I don't feel like they really care a lot about BBB, but there is a good amount of people that still play BBB. So it's like a cool thing. Alright? So that's the BBB for you in Lost Ark.
Now the classes in Lost Ark here are there. So the first thing we have the warrior. So every class has something called an advanced class. You have you pick it instantly after you pick your class. So the first thing is the warrior. The warrior has four now, and we get more and more, right? So we have the berserker. We that's like your normal big sword, high damage, uh, melee class. You have the destroyer, which is like slower-ish but deals a lot of damage and tanky. Gun Lancer is just straight up the tank. These are the two straight up tanks in the game. Very tanky class, right? As you can see also here. And the Baladin, which is one of the supports in the game. Alright, so the Baladin is uses it's a close range, uses light support. I'm um, obviously like I'm not gonna go specifically about this, I'm just showing it. So if some if somehow you don't know the class in the game and if you already know you can just skip this part also you can find i'm sure there's like hundreds of videos of people showing every class and everything in the game so don't, don't get uh, fooled by this this is a class that is not in the game yet i i, I don't think so i think that's the uh the other class anyways so now the classes we have in the game so the arcane is one of the that, that's the newest class we just got it uses cards and it deals damage with it so it's a really cool mage idea so and mostly the mages in this game are like the same idea so they're like class mage they have high range cool abilities but they're very squishy but they deal good damage so you have that's the same idea for the archers and the sorcerers right and then you have the board which is uses sound and it's basically a support all right now the martial artist so there's the female version so we have the war dancer. So all of these, like the, all of the the martial arts, have the war dancer and the scrapper. They're close to the idea of uh, gameplay, where like the close range, they hit a lot and deal good damage, but they're still close range. So and they also have like to somewhat skill to them. The scrapper is more or less like the war dancer because the war dancer has to like put in some work deal damage the scrapper just deals good damage soul fist is your close range melee range mid range high a little bit range class so it's basically that's the class you want to deal the highest damage within the game you have this like super sane mode when then you just throw this big nuke so you have like a, a you can throw a big nuke at the boss all right then you have the glavier so that's that's a two stance weapon you have two stance which is like the glaive and the spear it's high damage close range and very fast all right then you have the the martial artist male version so that's the like same idea as the war dancer but so they're closer to each other but the striker has more mobility type it's still close range damage but it with more mobility and then you have the gunners so you have the dead eye uh, you have sharpshooter first which is like a bow so the class plays with the bow and has an identity that allows it to summon a hawkeye with it uh, a hawk with it and it just basically deals good damage it's high range and it's kind of sniperish dead eye that plays with three guns so it has like pistol shotgun and sniper and it's good it kind of is played in the game but it is really good damage but it's kind of difficult Artillery, that's the one I showed some footage with. This is like um, close to, it's mid to high range and sometimes close. Very tanky class and there's a lot of damage but they're all delayed. Alright. We have the female gunner which is the gunslinger. So same thing as the dead eye, three weapons. And but the, obviously the female and the male version, they're not exactly the same. So they're different. In, a, in some in some things but overall idea they're very close to each other last thing is the assassins we have the death blade so this blade is your standard uh, just like high damage class that and it moves a little bit it's not that high mobility but it actually you can say it has high mobility you could say that uh, and it has high damage shadow hunter so this class can is uh, Close range, high damage, and has like the identity for it. It turns into a demon form, and that deals really good damage. So like this is one of the classes that if you really like to play with demon form and stuff like that, transformations. This is one of them. So these are the classes right now we have. We also have more classes in the game. So that depends on uh, 
when they unlock it so right now they're going with their release so it released like three classes already and they're going with like two week two month release so they're gonna release another class and that's how they're going with the classes in the game now the bay features in this game so in lost arc the game allows you to buy in-game currencies and other things so so there's multiple things that you get to buy and the first thing is that you can buy in-game currency so this is the prices of the old in-game currencies right and the way it works is that you buy these in-game currencies and you either buy with them bundles of things here or buy or exchange them to gold right and also uh, gold and these bundles differentiate so some of the bundles give you materials and some of the others give you skins so can someone get stronger with bay with bay features in this game yes of course do i th is it a bad thing i think it's a completely good addition to the game to this game specifically for small reasons which is that there is no benefits you get from bay to win in this game because the game is mostly bve and and if you ever play bvb the bvb ranked in this game is locked so you don't get any bonuses right so the only bonus you get from bv from buying here is in bvb but it doesn't matter because you play together you don't play against each other and also the game has a system the way that the game system is, is that the unlock the the you don't rush you into stuff so the every new expansion or every new thing that we get is the time between both is very good for a normal player you don't even have to grind so much to reach the point so all the all that you gain from paying in this game which i think is good is that if you don't have time at all is that you manage to reach good enough gear or you manage to reach it and that's why i feel like it's good because that allows more people to play a game right some people have like very limited amount of time to play games so that allows them to play there is also like valuable things so and also the game limits you to how much you can pay obviously the limit is huge so it doesn't matter but in general term you don't get to there is a specific amount of bundles that the game allow you that you can buy right and these things that you can buy are very valuable and after that the value decreases right so you don't really see a lot so you can you even if you're a free to play player Sometimes you can buy some things if you don't have the time to do them, right? And that's the idea. And also there is a way that you can buy a ticket before the game to level up to finish the story for you. So that they added that newly, which is really cool also because some people don't like to do the story. So they can simply skip it by buying it if they feel like it. So yeah. So that's the bay version. I don't think the game is by any chance you will feel annoyed by any pay to win players you can be a free to play player you can pay in it and get some increase but overall you both do the same dungeon with and it doesn't really matter that much all right now the last two things we're gonna talk about which is the alts and how grinded the game they kind of go together so alts and how grinded the game so the game offers you to make alts right so you can make a normal alt which is you can make six characters for free and after that every space cost you amount of money i think every space costs you around like 10 euros but if you buy all six it will cost you like 50 or less i don't remember i didn't buy any any all right so the way it works is that your main you have a main and then your alts start from zero but they give you something called passes every every now and then and also you have a stronghold that allows you basically they give you a pass which you use and that boosts your character from level one to the level the bass allows you so the i so they just released a new character and when they released a new character they boosted all they boosted one of your character to tier 3 which is gear power 1300 or 1302 basically so they give you like this big boost right and even if they didn't allow that there is another thing which is your stronghold that's something that's like your you get a stronghold in the game which you get to do like crafting and stuff like that and also you get to level up a character so the only idea is that you have to have a main that is high enough and then make an alt now the alts the why would you make an alt in this game obviously the main reason well that's not the main reason but the one thing that is given is that you could make an alt because you don't know which main do you want to play with so you could make multiple of alts and just try all of them and feel them and then see what they give you that's like the general like for me i like most of my characters so they all equal equally strong and strongish 
right? And the second thing is that you get is that each each alt gets you a good amount. You can do the same dungeon with. So the biggest legion raids and stuff like that, that gives you a good amount of gold per week. You can only do them once per character, but it's not per roster. So it's per character, so you can get to repeat them. So you get more money out of your alls and sure thing. So to put it down this way, if you want to be very rich in the game, you kind of have to play with alts. That's how it works. So if alts is not a thing for you, that's kind of will, that will be hard. But that goes to the idea of how grinding the game. Do you have to play with alts to be rich? Yes. But do you have to play with alts to reach end game? I don't think so. Some people, people can argue with me in this part, but I don't think so. I have seen multiple of my friends play this game without alts, without anything. They don't play too grindy and they reach in game with me at the same time. That's because of the, they don't have, they're not as rich as someone that plays more. And like, I'm not as rich as someone that plays more in the game. But the general idea is that you still get to reach it. And that goes to the idea of how grindy the game. After finishing the story and the st finishing the story is your speed. Collectibles is your speed. So I'm not going to put these in, in the idea. That's that depends. You just play the game. You do collectibles. You play the game. You finish story. That's something like different. But the idea of like how much you have to spend on the game and how grindy to reach in game. I think it's not that grindy because I've seen a friend who plays the game off and off every day. Not every day. And it's just for like one hour or something. And that, that's enough to do all of them. And in one day, he sits for uh, more than one hour to do all the big dungeons, all the raids. And that's enough for him to reach in game. So I don't feel the game is that grindy. It can be grindy if you want, but I don't feel like it's, it's necessarily grindy. That's how I view the game. And that's basically everything about Lost Ark. I think that's kind of includes everything about Lost Ark. Uh, actually, one thing that I want to talk about is how often they update the game. Right now, we're playing in the EU in a version, and that version, it, we're basically taking the stuff from the main game, which is the KR, and we're like in a catch up phase. So, we're getting updates very fast. So, we get an update every one to two months, which has a big, juicy update. So, that's, that's kind of the speed we are now. That speed is going to continue to be like that for a while until we kind of catch up or be close from the KR version. But so far, there is a good amount of content in the game. We get it. And I think overall, the game has obviously downs and down, bad things about it, good things about it. But the most thing that I would recommend in this game is that the raiding in this game is really fun. If Especially if you have a raiding party. If you can find a raiding party, you and you don't have to have it like before you play the game you can play in the game and then find people you can make like a reading party and you say in the party that if anybody want to join you in discord or something like that it would be fun and that's like one thing i highly recommend and basically that's it that's everything i think about lost ark and if you guys have anything about about this video any questions say down in the comments i love reading them and see you in the next one goodbye